welcome to another Olmstead Therapy video blog. In these little talks, I explore the wide, rain, wide realm of cognitive behavioral therapy and delve into how our thoughts shape our inner lives, our external behavior, and our mood. And this talk is called Our Common Psychosis. This talk might be a little challenging, okay? It might cut a little close to home, but let's dive right in. And I'm opening this one with a uh, story um, from Aesop's Fables. So, I quote, A man and his wife had the good fortune to possess a goose which laid a golden egg every day. Luckily, though, they were, luck, lucky though they were, they soon began to think they were not getting rich fast enough. And imagining the bird must be made of gold on the inside, they decided to kill it in order to secure the whole store of precious metal all at once. But when they cut it open, they found it was just like any other goose. Thus, they neither got rich all at once, as they had hoped, nor enjoyed any longer the daily addition to their wealth. And the moral of the story? Much wants more and loses all. Much wants more and loses all. Killing the source of your blessings with the thought that you can therefore harness the source of blessing is psychotic. Before we judge the couple, however, let's take inventory of our own circumstances. Immediate gratification is well known to produce adult infants, such as the impatient couple in the story, or like us, perhaps. I said this would be challenging. Even we who are otherwise responsible and independent can't help but have a streak of the toddler's impatience once in a while. It is the modern American way, it seems, to demand for oneself that which we want when we want it and in the manner in which we want it. We have so much, and yet it is never enough. When someone or some circumstance obstructs our demand, we overtly lose our cool and internalize the anger, or sometimes are very overt about our anger. But this old fable, many centuries old, reveals to us this demand for gratification on our own terms is nothing new. It is not uniquely American, nor modern. It is part of the broken human condition. We must strive to identify this pe peculiar vice in us. That is, the demand in pride that we get blessings on our own terms and in our own timing. Truly, the demand never works out in the end, as the fable of the goose shows. Such a prideful insistence operates in a world of fantasy, illusion. In short, in short, it is a type of psychosis, a detachment from reality. Usually, the psych usually psychoses in general are seen as the worst sort of mental illness. Total detachment from reality. Don't know what's going on seeing things, hearing things, acting out violently, wildly, or we lock up and drug people in our society who we determine have some kind of psychosis. If they hear voices, they harm themselves, we put them away. And yet instant gratification is such an acceptable illness today, and apparently always, that we routinely fail to see it for what it is, that it also is a departure from reality. Instant gratification destroys character and results in a decayed mental and emotional state. Or worse off, it is a form of self-harm, a form of seeing things that aren't there. It is often accompanied by self-medication, such as excessive use of alcohol or pornography or other destructive behaviors, other destructive substances. Indeed, Instant gratification is our common psychosis. So how did the couple's character get destroyed? Well, they butchered their little pet. This, this little pet that was unconditionally giving them this golden egg, they tore it open to see what it was like on the inside. They, they dissected this little creature to, 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 to extract its, its essence, which they believed was gold. It, their character, they, were, they had a, a blinding effect over their minds to think that this was something that was, they had a blinding effect over their minds to think that this was something okay. Their mental and emotional state was decayed. 
and they became worse off. Um, how did they, how did they engage in self harm? They they saw thing they saw things that weren't there, and it damaged their income. It damaged their economic standing. What did they see that wasn't there? This these projection of thoughts, this imagination that if we just dissect the goose, we'll be able to access the golden, the, the, the rest of it, and we'll have a, a windfall of wealth. They were detached from reality. Okay, so how does this apply to our life? Well, I don't know how it applies to your life, but I know how it applies to my life and my mental health. I need to strive to be patient. I need to strive for patient acceptance of my neighbors and patient acceptance of the world as it is. Patient acceptance of my circumstances rather than demanding perfection or demanding things go my way when I want them to or wanting the quantity and quality of pleasure when, where, and how I want it. So strive towards patience. I also, I, I also know I need to accept every blessing and difficulty as it comes. I need to accept it instead of fight against it. If I can learn to want what's happening now, I'll never be unhappy. I cannot worry. Worrying is a behavior. It comes out physically, but with the rumination of thoughts, the spinning hamster wheel of insanity, the worrying thoughts, that's a mental behavior. I can do something about that. I have more control over worry than I give myself credit. So I can stop worrying. I can let each day be a sufficient focus for the needs of that day without wanting more than I need for that day or without getting worked up because I don't have what I need for that day or getting worked up about the future. I just let each day be sufficient for its own. I can give it all to God and cut back on the things I know I need to cut back on. And for you, what, what do you need to cut back on? You know, in what ways do we self-medicate? Caffeine, alcohol, what do we, how do we self-medicate? What behaviors, maybe? Gambling, pornography? I needed to stop demanding things go when and how I want them to go. And I think this radical acceptance of the world as it is, is the only way to true sanity. This radical acceptance of the world as it is, and not how we imagine it to be, and not how we demand it should be, to fit instant gratification. This is the only approach for true sanity. Thank you very much. If you, any of this rhymes with your experience, reach out to me today, book an appointment, and I hope to hear from you.